Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Evil West, Evil Difficulty No Healing walkthrough. This is Chapter 13, Old Friends. And we are back in our hub world, moving around. It's interesting, the coming back to this location. There is a plot significance to it, and you can probably predict it before it happens. But I do think it would have been more meaningful if we had been present for it. And I know narratives love to do that, where it's like, the hero must go off to this place, and then when they come back, oh no, something has happened. It's been doing that since, what, Final Fantasy IV? And it is a very effective storytelling tool. But I would be lying if I said that I wish we could have fought in this area. Because one of the things I like the most when they establish a hub like this, and a safety of the hub and a security, is when that security and safety is destroyed. And, and you have to go in there and get shit done. I think it's such a rousing premise and setup for gameplay, and they kind of completely skipped over it. And everybody sees it coming because your father is infected, and then all of a sudden this miracle cure, this holistic remedy, is working a little bit too well, and your father's saying he feels 20 years younger. Which, think about what we know about vampirism, you know? Like, why... Why would father, if he was cured, be feeling 20 years younger? Hmm, I wonder what is going to happen. But alas, what can you do? Jess is not known for his intelligence, he's known for his, his, his brashness, apparently. But this is an interesting fight, this. This is one of the crones with the wasps, and a bunch of these elite guys. And then there's that guy with the gun that's shooting at me right now. So I'm going to use the, the stun on this guy, and then I'm going to kill him with my super-powered mode. And then I'll need to get rid of him before he starts doing shenanigans. Something to note about that charge gun that he just did. Of course, if you shoot the weak point, you'll shut it down. But when it glints, as soon as it glints and it makes that noise, if you roll, it usually desyncs their aim from you. And it works like 9 times out of 10. But every so often, you'll do a roll and he'll hit you at the end. And that's the problem with that mechanic. That gun mechanic is... pretty cheesy at times. Like right now, he's going to do it as I come out of this, if you watch. Right there. Oh, he threw dynamite. I got lucky. It's just... Giving this opponent the ability to go into a very quick gunshot makes them feel cheaper than they are. They're actually a good enemy, and they're absolutely fine, but that particular speedy gun... I would slow it down, personally. Because if he does it when you're not looking at him, you have to get lucky on your dodge, unless you have a masterful understanding of when to dodge. And I've put, like, 20 hours into this game at this point, and I still don't know the, the, the specific timing to do it on sound alone. So it's, it's one of those things where... This is the enemy, by the way, that hit me when I was miles away. So be very careful when he slams his weapon into the floor. It has a nuclear hitbox. And they can also throw their weapon, which is a cool touch. But they can throw their weapon throw it through each other, which I don't like. When that guy throws his weapon, it should hit his back. It shouldn't hit me. And that's my favourite execution in the game, that. When he puts the crippling rod in their mouth and he smacks the bottom of it. That is such a cool little detail. I like it so much. But you know what I do want to talk about? The idea of reusing areas. Because this is something that comes up in video games quite a lot, and I don't know if anybody's talked about it with this game. This game has some, go some good environments, but I can't help but feel like it reuses them a little bit. So, if you remember, we came out to destroy a glamour, and we came into a rainy kind of wood like this, this like you know when they filmed Stargate SG-1? That place when it's rainy and foggy. And we went there, we destroyed the glamour, we did some things, and there were some, some establishments, some mills and stuff, right? This level is different, but it's got kind of that same aesthetic of this kind of smoky, misty mountains with the, the big trees and the colour palette of greys and, and whatnot and brown hues. Like, I kind of wish this level didn't look like that other level, you know, with the fog and everything. Because it makes you feel like you're coming back to a very similar place, even though you're not. And the, the geometry is different. The fights are different, obviously. 
But it does feel like, you know, we're coming back to Tommy's Dam for the second time. And because they, they space it out in such a way, it does feel a bit diminishing, I feel. And it's the same with the snow level. Earlier on, we go to get our glove powered up at that snowy place with Virgil. And then the mission we just did, Lightning in a Bottle, is another snowy place. And it's almost like we're going back to the same zone, even though you're not, you know. And I like the idea of moving between biomes. I just think in this game, it does make it feel like you... Did you see that? That bugs me so much, dude. Getting hit by jump attacks that don't fucking touch you might be my biggest pet peeve in video games. And it doesn't matter what I play. Whenever I get hit by some flying bullshit hitbox, oh my god, I get really annoyed. And now we just have to finish off the mole. Who You can parry this enemy, but the amount of times I try and do it and I don't get anything. I don't know how to feel about it either, because I'm of two minds here. One part of me thinks maybe you should only be able to parry him if you build up his stun bar. But at the same time, I'd like to be rewarded for my good timing, you know? Like, how is that not a parry? How is that not a parry? How is that not a parry? Like, <laughs> it's very interesting, isn't it? This monster does not like to be parried. And then when you do parry him, you feel like it's on the moves where you had the worst timing. And I'm curious, too. I'd love to talk to the dev. Like, do they have the parry turned off on him until you stun him? Or is it just one of those things where the timing is so eclectic and specific, if you don't do it the way they want you to do it, you don't get it? And I don't know if I've mentioned this earlier, I might have done, but I think the parry should work like the parries in most games. I think if you press guard as the attack's about to hit you, you should parry everything. That's the point of a parry. I don't like holding a parry when they start moving and then five seconds later getting a parry. It makes it feel like I could have pressed it at any time, you know? It doesn't feel like it rewards timing, it feels like it rewards panicking. And I can't tell if that's something they've put in there to make a bad player feel better, or if they wanted you to parry so early. Because I don't really like early parries, it reminds me of Dark Souls 2. But this area again, I like this zone, but doesn't it remind you of Chapter 8 when we were in the Pharmacon, and it's got this green effect going on? And, and I think that's the problem, isn't it? You know, when you have comparable colour schemes and comparable aesthetics, like these platforms are the exact same as that level. It makes it feel like we're on that level. And there's 16 levels on this game. There didn't need to be 16 levels. This game is lengthy. They could have stripped out the levels and made them a bit leaner so it didn't feel like you were revisiting old locations. And I, I just need to ask you guys, do you feel like that? Do you get what I'm saying here, guys? Or do, do you not see that at all? Because when I first played, I didn't really feel that way. But my second playthrough, I definitely felt it then. And I think it's just because I knew the game a bit better, you know? And I don't think it's like a huge problem. I don't think it's going to, you know, impose on your enjoyment or anything. But it does have this weird effect in my brain. I do like the really slow ladder climb as well. That one looks really funny. That reminds me of Demon Souls ladder climbing. And now we get the upgrade for the crossbow. This is good, this one, guys. This one makes the, the crossbow do a lot of damage. And it's really good against the final boss as well. This crossbow does more damage to the final boss than punching it does. And I'm, I don't know why that's the case. I'd, I'd love to speak to somebody who could convince me why the damage you do to the bosses in this game is a good idea. Because even on normal, you're not killing these bosses quickly. It's like they want you to fight against them for hours. It's so funny to me. Like, go watch the Sam fight on Metal Gear Rising on Revengeance. You can kill Sam in, like, ten seconds. You can kill Sam in two parries. Two parries! And Sam's one of the hardest fights in the game until you learn him, and then he's one of the easiest. Like, you don't have to make a boss an absolutely unbearable gauntlet to be difficult. You have to make them capable... And make them fair. And it was funny going back to Metal Gear Rising because I saw a lot of people that were saying that the Sam fight's like the best fight in games. It's so different and it's so dynamic. And I'm sitting there thinking, dude, <laughs> this fight ain't that good. <laughs> this fight really ain't that good. You need to fight a Zell. <laughs> you need to take that dude on. And then you'll understand what that means. Because this ain't it, Chief. 
And it's a funny world, isn't it? If you've never fought a Zell on, on God Hard, I say God Hard, I mean level die. Like, you just don't know. <laughs> and who knows, maybe there's a boss out there somewhere that I don't know about that makes a Zell look like a bitch. Oh, speaking of bitches, this is a new enemy, this. So, the new enemy has a Gatling gun. He's always at a distance, making him difficult to shoot. And you can't shoot him conventionally until his weak point turns up. And his weak point is so delayed, it takes ages to kill him. And uh, I think this enemy's fucking terrible and should be removed. Because he's just a familiar. He's just a human, but you can't shoot him. Really annoying. But this one is actually narrative plot armor, this one. Later on when they turn up, when you should be able to kill them, you just can't. So you then have to stand there like you're waiting for a bus that doesn't exist just to shoot the bugger. I'm stuck on uh, collision there as well. This happens quite a lot, you're going to see this. But right here, guys, I can't hurt him. Shooting him's pointless. You can only hurt him when he has the weak point ring, and it takes two weak point rings to kill him. They need to change that. He should go down in one. He's a boring enemy. Like, this one might even take more than two. That's how fucking boring he is. Because you've got to kill him in a cutscene. That right there, guys, is scripting gone mad. That's some draconian dog shit, and it needs to go. This gun, though, is really good. The Rentier Gatling. A weapon named after your institute, yet not in your institute. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? A random jobber in a fucking cave has one of the more powerful tools of your entire institution. <laughs> you gotta love video games, right? They make a lot of sense. But it's the suspension of, of disbelief, isn't it? But 522 bucks. Couple of things to talk about with the Gatling gun and the flamethrower. I've, I've spoken about how I'd like them to work earlier on. And I've played a little bit more around with them to get a bit more comfortable with swapping. I've actually changed my binding on the flamethrower. Because pressing 2 was pissing me off. So. You can use blocking or tap the parry button to get out of the being locked in the flamethrower mode. You can also use the shotgun. And I think that that's the best way to do it personally. I think when you go into flamethrower, pressing the shotgun is probably the routine I'm going to get into to get it off quickly. Because as it stands, you can put the flamethrower on, shoot it to set someone fire, and then you can press the button you press to put it on to take it off. That's one way you were doing it, and I was doing it like that. But now, I think I'm going to tie those two interactions together. And it's unfortunate that when you set people on fire, the damage boost that you get isn't on all your weapons, because it would be really nice. And I actually thought it was because I read it wrong for the longest time. But it's only on your melee attacks. But what is cool is there's a perk in this game that I'm going to miss in this, this walkthrough, which gives you 25% extra damage to airborne enemies. So you can stun an enemy, set them on fire to get that 30% bonus melee damage, and then you can launch them, get that 25% bonus damage, and then when you combo them in midair, you're going to do 55% extra damage. And that sounds wonderful. So I'm really looking forward to experimenting with that. But you won't see that in this walkthrough, guys, because I didn't find it. You know that game where it's impossible to miss the upgrades and it's impossible to miss the secrets? Well, guess what? I play better. I play 50 times better than any person you'll watch reviewing this game. And I missed them. So. Just another reason to think that those bad reviews were entirely full of shit. But this is cool. We have two moles at the same time. And I wish they'd have done this sooner. Because instead, they give you two moles, they give you those elite familiars, and then they give you wolves. Which is just really crazy that they give you this many things. And credit to the game, this is a super fun fight, and this works really well. I like this fight a lot, but it's a lot of things to deal with at once. This is like some master level shit. But I, I love this fight, it's a great one. I just think these enemies complement each other very well. I'd love to have seen more moles and more werewolves, but you just don't see them that often. You see way more higher vampires, you see way more like shield men. Like, you see way more of those leech guys. I also wanted to see more of the flyers too. I think you could put flyers with this guy and it'd make it quite annoying. 
I shouldn't have took a hit on this fight. I don't know why I did. But that's how easy it is to take damage in this game. And now we do the 1v1. And I'm not using the stun on him either. Which... Take a shot, guys, if you're doing a drinking game on the guide. Every time I fill the gold stun bar and I don't use the electricity to get the free e-combo, that's an opportunity to have a nice swig of your preferred beverage. That was interesting. I'm trying to punch him between his strings. That's an optimization I haven't quite got to yet, but I'm definitely going to. And we have the... Look at the stun this gun has, guys. It absolutely shuts people down. It's brutal. By the way, right now, it wouldn't let me take the flamethrower off. If you're wondering why I was walking around then like a lunatic, <laughs> I was pressing the button and it's like, Jesse, hello? <laughs> hello, Jesse. <laughs> you have to speak to me, Jesse. I don't want the flamethrower on anymore. Like but he just kept doing it for some reason. And then we have a puzzle here that involves destroying a glamour by shooting a bunch of weak points. Open it first. And I think the glamour was a decent idea. I think glamours... And shooting the weak points is a more interesting environmental puzzle than pushing the minecart. I'm definitely of the belief that the minecart is one of the weaker options. The first one is on the left hand side here, but the collision's kind of bad on these rocks, so be careful. There's a couple of moments like this in the game where I don't understand how they didn't find the collision to be awkward. Because I would imagine that the game testers and the QA people have to run around the levels to make sure you don't get stuck on everything. Like, I would imagine that that's somebody's job. And there's two spots in this game where it's areas that are quite apparent and quite easy to locate. And it's very easy to get stuck on them. And it makes me wonder if that's a frame rate thing. Because one of the things I've noticed, if you, if you play old games on high frame rates, collision boxes start to get affected in a very bizarre way. Like, there's points where you literally cannot move because it's as if the collisions become a... Like, look at this. It's like the collisions become an absolute brick wall. And conventionally, on like 60, what they're designed around, if they're designed to be 60, you don't have that issue because they're, they're designed around that, that particular frame. But when you boost it, it's almost like it extends it in some way or it stretches it. And I don't really know what that is. It'll be fascinating to, in a few years, when people realize that this is all going off and the industry moves beyond 60 frames per second and this console coffin of poor performance. I'll be interested to find out what was happening there and what's going on. And now we've made it to my favourite room in the game. Which is this awesome looking cornfield. However, it must be said, it does get quite difficult to see your enemies. And I'm not entirely certain why they put an enemy in this cornfield that lays mines. Because that just feels like that level on Street Fighter V where the, the fucking water blocks people's legs so you can't see animations for footsies. That just seems like the developers don't know what they're doing. However, I know what I'm doing, so I instantly kill that stupid enemy and we get to the proper fight, which is a bunch of werewolves and this enemy here that likes to stomp on the ground. And again, kind of hard to see what's happening because of the cornfield. But I love the idea of this place. I would have handled it differently, personally. Hell, can you imagine if you could break the corn and flatten it? Oh, that'd be so cool. Breaking the corn stalks. Make it happen, guys! Next game! Come on, Evil West sequel 2023. You've got the assets, now just design some enemies and some new levels and I'm all over it. But looking at this room, I bet you're thinking there's going to be a fight here, aren't you guys? Because that's what Evil West likes to do. Big, big giant circles, easily telegraphed. Well, guess what? It's the end of the level! Shock, horror, surprise! You didn't see that, gaming journalist, did you? Thank you for watching. You take care now.